It looks like meat. If meat is so bad, why are we making fake meat? Guys, today's video is brought to you in part by not by that. We are bringing you a video today and we're talking about animals, animal husbandry, life and death. We're talking about genetics. We're talking about feeding the land, feeding the soil. We're talking about veganism and vegetarianism, which is just fine with me. You make whatever choices you want to make, but we're gonna put out some fires that seem to be burning deep in the heart of every vegan about what ranching and farming does for the environment and does to the environment and the cycles of life and death that are going on beneath our feet and in our world all the time that for some reason are blocked out by the box that you buy off the shelf in the grocery store and it's simply not the truth. You're being fed a bunch of bull, a bunch of baloney by agenda-based documentaries, guys. Don't get all your information from Netflix. Today's video is important. Listen to it. Stony Bridge. Farm Stony Bridge. Stony Bridge Farm. So you've made the choice in your life to become a vegetarian or become vegan. Thank you. I'm glad you're doing that because there's more meat left for me and the other meat eaters in the world. That's not really very nice, is it? It's not very nice. It's also not very nice to attack us, the cattle ranchers and farmers, folks that raise animals out on land, ruminant animals, which have been raised out on the land and grooming the soil and grooming the land and pruning back the grass and providing pressure to the soil for a millennia. Guys, life is all about life and death. In the soil, in one handful of soil here, are more microbes than there are grains of sand or stars in the sky. It's absolutely unbelievable. But one thing you need to understand is one of those microbes is there to eat that other microbe. And then the bigger microbe is there eating the bigger microbe and eating and eating and eating until we get up into worms and we get up into larger species such as the skunk or we get into opossums, we get into species like raccoons and we work our way up the food chain from wolves, coyotes, foxes, bovine animals, just like this. These are bovine ruminant animals. If you don't understand what ruminant means, it means inside that cow's belly is a big old mess of bacteria, just like inside your body, just like inside your stomach, on your skin, on your face, on your eyeballs. There is bacteria, and that bacteria is always at work, feeding and digesting food stuff, fighting off bad things and bringing in good things. It's called normal flora, guys, in case you don't know what it's called. Now, this video was prompted for me to do by a lot of really, really nasty comments that I received when we got our new bull here on the farm from folks that choose a vegan or vegetarian lifestyle. They're blaming climate issues on cattle. So we sequester more carbon on this farm than we produce. These animals are the lifeblood of the land, guys. For eons, for centuries, bison, great bison, roamed the Great Plains of the United States, building 12, 15, 20 foot deep topsoil. Inside that topsoil are living creatures. Those living creatures do all sorts of stuff. They provide nutrient for the land. They pull nitrogen from the sky to the land to feed the plants. These animals are necessary, guys, and we do not have keystone species that are predators like we used to have, like wolves that would be out here. So these animals live out on the land, they consume the grass, they trample the grass, they stimulate the root system of the grass, they also stimulate the growth of the grass. Right now it's winter time and they're eating hay, they're consuming hay, and what comes out the back end of that cow? It is almost pH neutral carbon pH neutral, nitrogen. It is food for the land. So what we're doing, we have manure pats that are out all over the farm and we spread those manure pats. No fertilizer. That's right, girl. 
<laughs> no fertilizer has been spread on this land for six years, guys, and it's flourishing, and our animals are flourishing. We don't worm them. We don't give them antibiotics unless they're sick. We don't give them medicines. We don't have to give them a pill. They're out here in the wintertime when the ground is wet and you don't see any mud. Why don't you see? That's right, girl. <laughs> Why don't you see any mud? because we are rotationally grazing our animals. We don't feed them in a hay ring and destroy the soil around that hay ring. We rotationally graze our animals and let them spread the manure all over the farm, just like you see right out here, guys. So as we roll out the hay day to day, these animals spread manure, which feeds the land, which feeds the microbes, which feeds the earthworms, which feeds the soil, which fixes nitrogen to the soil and sequesters carbon from the sky. It pulls carbon from the sky in the form of grass from photosynthesis. The sun grows the plants, the microbes feed the plants, the grass falls to the ground or gets consumed by these animals and it comes out their back end as carbon on the soil. We sequester carbon with these animals. This is not a factory farm. Now, what you need to understand is if you're vegan or vegetarian, the fruits that you eat come from trees, trees which grow in an orchard, trees which are treated, fertilized, and sprayed, okay? Treated, fertilized, and sprayed. No fertilizer, no treatment, no spray here. Just so you know, the broccoli you get out of the grocery store is treated, fertilized, washed, sprayed, and hauled. Don't even think for one minute that the food that you're consuming has no carbon footprint because the tractor that tilled the land, or even if it's a no-till, the tractor that planted the seed, the tractor that harvested the seed, the tractor trailer that hauled the food, the workers that came and picked the food and or sorted the food, the plastic bags that the food is in, all of this stuff is not carbon neutral. These animals are carbon negative, guys, and you're telling me that cattle farming is somehow destroying the earth when everything you're consuming comes in a little plastic bag that is hauled thousands if not tens of thousands of miles for you to eat. Now let's talk about fake meat. This is fake meat. This is a plant-based burger. I'm gonna eat it later. I'm gonna eat one of these later. I'll, I'll try it man. I, I'm not totally against it. If that's the choice that you make then let that be your choice. But someone manufactured this box. Let's just get into it. I haven't even opened this yet. Someone manufactured this box. The ingredients of this ultimate plant-based burger, that's the ultimate plant-based burger right there. Very simple, looks really good, looks like Oh man, sesame seed bun. Sesame seeds, huh? Well, I wonder where they're grown. I wonder if they're fertilized. Hmm, I wonder. Well, let's just see. Let's pull this out. It's uh, non-GMO verified, always vegan is what it says right here. And the ingredients are water, textured pea protein, coconut oil, textured wheat protein, wheat gluten, wheat flour, vital wheat gluten, 2% of less of methyl cellulose, natural flavors, barley, malt extract, garlic powder, salt, yeast extract, onion powder, black pepper, beet juice for color, and lactic acid. Contains wheat. All right. Cool. Let's see what it looks like. I'm really curious as to what it looks like. Well, it looks pretty much they're individually wrapped. This was $6 at the store. There's two of them in here, okay? Where was this made? Where was this box made? In a factory. Let's just open one of these up and see what it looks like. So I tear into it. Again, this is supposed to be, you know, we're supposed to be saving the environment. So I'm not afraid to eat this at all. This is what it looks like. It looks like meat. If meat is so bad, why are we making fake meat? <laughs> I don't know, man. Seems pretty counterintuitive. If meat is so bad and you're vegan, why are you buying something that says plant-based burger? That is not a burger. That is a veggie patty. That's what that is. It's not a burger, but it says burger on here. I don't know if you can call anything a burger. I guess I could probably call one of these cow patties a burger if I wanted to, guys. I don't know, man. I don't know what the answer is here, but I do know that the answer 
For small farms, and we're not talking about a concentrated animal feeding operation, otherwise known as a CAFO, we're talking about small farms just like we have here. Regenerative farms, farms that build soil. And I think no matter if you're vegetarian, a meat eater, a vegan, or you just hate everyone, I think you can see the value in bringing and sequestering carbon back to our soil, building our soil, fixing what our ancestors have destroyed, and I think you can understand that these cow's burps are not harming you in any way. More carbon is sequestered on this farm by these animals and more carbon is produced. There's a difference in the carbon in the air and the carbon which is the building block of life. You are made of water and carbon and minerals. Guys, you are made of water, carbon, and minerals. Let me tell you another thing. If you think that no animals were harmed in the harvesting of your food and you're vegan, you are absolutely wrong. There are sprays, there are tractors, there are implements, there are things being killed, there are microbes being killed, there are earthworms being killed, there are mice, vermin, there's habitat that's being destroyed, there's a dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. Do you get what I'm saying here? Do you understand what I'm saying? I wanna hear your feedback, I wanna hear your comments. What we do here is not having our cattle and our animals wading across belly deep in manure, consuming products that were raised out in a grain field. What we're doing is letting mother nature provide light, microbes do the work, photosynthesis, building food for these animals. They consume it. The byproduct of building soil and photosynthesis is beef here. And I don't understand how that can be wrong. There's one thing that you cannot run out of. That is your genes. That is your genetic makeup. You look in the mirror, go in there, open your mouth and smile. You have canine teeth right here in your mouth. Guys, we're omnivores. We are not herbivores. We are omnivores, not herbivores. So whether you get your protein from a plant-based diet or whether you get your protein from animals such as this, ruminant animals which disturb the soil, which disturb the grasses, which stimulate growth and sequester carbon, whether you make the decision to eat meat or not doesn't matter to me, but I think you need to know that it's a necessity for the health of the land to have ruminant animals out here healing the land. Ruminant animals are keystone species that help to build soil. I hope all you guys that do choose a plant-based diet aren't offended by this. I want you to understand our cows don't go in the creeks, they don't go in the ponds, they don't go in the waterways. They provide microbial life and stimulation for growth of grass due to photosynthesis here on the farm. That's the way it's supposed to be. An ecosystem cannot survive without ruminant animals just like this. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down there, please. I want to hear some feedback. I want to hear what you have to say. Please be constructive, not destructive. Open your mind to a new way of thinking, guys. Open your mind to a new way of thinking and living and get away from this crazy extremism where everybody has to be against one another. I don't care if you're vegan. I don't care if you're vegetarian, it's your choice. It's our choice to raise animals out here on pasture and to help build the soil and to sequester this carbon. It's our choice. It's your choice also and you vote with your dollar. Do you want to do away with factory farms? Then do away with the food that you're buying from the factory. Factory foods are no different than factory farms. Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your wife and 